This is Kenning Park, set in the heart of Clay Cross, Derbyshire. A place of recreation, leisure, picnics, dog walking, sports and outdoor activity. Some of you who use the park might not know this, but the park was given to the people of Clay Cross by a very special man. This was Sir George Kenning. Local councillor, trustee of Chesterfield NHS Board, member of the local Methodist Church and the first major motor dealer in the United Kingdom. A powerful and influential figure who came from humble beginnings. Let's talk to Sir George himself and find out how it all started. Well, I was born in 1880 to an ex-miner who'd gone into the hardware business. I was 11 years old when I left school. I went door to door selling and I worked on father's market stall in Chesterfield. Then came my lucky break. In the early 1900s, there was a competition run by the Queen's Honey Soap Company. You had to collect the most soap wrappers that you could. Well, I was a bit of a charmer at that age, so I asked all my customers to save their wrappers for me, and I paid them for the privilege. Soon I had collected enough, over a thousand I think it was, and so of course I won the car. Anyway, that gave me a real taste for cars and business. And when in 1908 I lost both my father and my brother, I took over the hardware and haulage business. Now, everything was transported by horse and cart in those days. Paraffin, machinery, domestic goods, everything. It was hard work, I can tell you. I was always looking forward to ways to expand the business. The motor car was just taking off in this country and I saw an opportunity. Bull-nosed Morris Minor cars were being manufactured in Oxford by William Morris, later to be known as Lord Nuffield. And I met him at a dinner party and then put in an order for the cars. I didn't have the money, but I knew, I knew inside me that this was the way forward, advancement, progress into the new age of mechanical transport. Well, we sold the cars and bought more. But one thing that always concerned me was making sure that the customer, the new car owner, had everything that they needed to make motoring a pleasurable and stress-free experience. So we started selling not only the cars, but fuel, spare parts and a valeting service, keeping the vehicles clean and in tip-top condition very important to the proud new car owner. The business grew and grew, but I never forgot my roots. I married my darling wife, and even though we moved away, I still remained connected to Clay Cross. I was on the Clay Cross Urban District Council. I was a councillor and an alderman for the Derbyshire County Council. I was active in the Methodist Church, and I was on the bench, a magistrate, I was also a member of the Chesterfield Hospital Board of Management. I hope I did give something back, but don't just take my word for it. Ask somebody who knew me. You're a self-made man. Every penny he had, he earned. He was no crook. It was absolutely wonderful. Because obviously car salesmen oh. tend to have a bit of a reputation, don't they? But that wasn't true for George? No, no, at all, no. He was a perfect gentleman. You couldn't wish to meet anyone any gentler, any honest people. He'd, he'd bow down to him. And he'd say, every penny he earned, he earned it properly. And... Uh, it was his own gap, he did it in his own way. And he could go and sell a car where anybody else couldn't. We've heard that. How? What was his technique in selling cars well, then? Well, he would just go along with, with things and he never bothered. 
just used to patch her on and patch on his never used to pressurise nobody. Wonderful chap. I couldn't say anything else. Now Colin, we've got Sir George on the phone. Hello, this is uh, Colin. Uh, I don't know whether you still remember me. We've had many hours talking in uh, Mother's garage where I used to work and uh, they were quite interesting. How are you? Made your fortune. Good question, Colin. And I well remember our chats when you worked in the garage, by the way. Well, I would say that my success was down to the fact that I always seized any opportunity and I wasn't afraid to take risks. And I always gave back to the community with things like the church bells or the trips to Skegness and more. And I honoured my father's memory and his dream of giving something to Claycross when I gave them Kenning Park. Oh, he was a philanthropist. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how he got his knighthood. I don't think it was through his car industry. I think it was through his generosity to the local people. Was he known and remembered as a kind of good man then? Oh, very locally? much so, yes, yes, yes. So uh, he, he was he was revered. The days when he had his forty fifty uh, uh, garages and filling stations all over the country, uh, the local people could relate to that. The fact that he said Kennings Limited, Claycross, and London, you know, to put things in perspective, order of importance. It was the first car that George Kenning had. And uh, my grandfather was getting married and uh, he borrowed it off him to go on his honeymoon. He lent it for like a week or so. That's right, yeah. And we have a photograph somewhere of grandfather and grandma uh, sat very uh, proudly in this car. <laughs> Hello, Sir George. Uh, hello. Uh, my name's Charles Clulo, which probably won't mean anything to you, but you will remember my grandfather, William Holmes, the shoemaker. Um, you were an agent for many makes of cars, and I just wonder, besides, say, Austin, uh, which other makes you sold? My first dealership was in motorbikes and trucks. And then I switched to Ford cars. Now Fords are good vehicles, but it was Morris cars that made my business successful. I liked their design and their efficiency. And William Morris became my lifelong friend. So, what's your message for the people of Claycross today? Enjoy life. Work hard. Be kind. And seize any opportunities that come your way. Mm -hmm.